Greetings. So today on the channel, we are going to be home brewing beer. We're gonna be home brewing with an extract based kit. So if you are new to home brewing or you think you wanna get into home brewing, I'm gonna show you some of the basic equipment needed and how to get delicious home brew using some of my techniques with an extract based kit. And if you're an intermediate brewer or more advanced or interested in getting into extracts, uh, I've been brewing for about 10 to 15 years now with extract kits so maybe some of the techniques and tips that i have uh, will be helpful to you as well so let's get into it so today i'm going to be doing an english pub ale this is a low alcohol content easy drinking beer almost like a cask beer it's going to taste great on tap and being that these extract kits uh you pretty much have to do a minimum of five gallons of beer which is a little over two cases of beer um this is going to be uh easy drinking it's going to taste good on tap so if you're new to home brewing if you can follow a recipe you can home brew i'm lucky enough to live in a town where my local home brew supply is about 10 minutes away and they sell kits that give you all of the ingredients and the basic instructions to make that beer. The easiest beers to make are ales, stouts, porters, wheat beers. They all pretty much follow the same amount of ingredients and uh, recipe, uh, the way to brew them. So once you get that process down, you can pretty much brew any of those things. Wheats, ales, stouts, porters, IPAs, pale ales, once you get into lagers and maybe Belgian beers and some more complicated styles, you might need more equipment, especially with lagers since they have to ferment at cold temperatures. But to make basic ales, IPAs, whatever your fancy is, Hefeweizens, it's pretty much the same recipe and all you're doing is changing the ingredients. So my local homebrew store puts together these kits and it gives you all of the basic ingredients that you need to make and all you gotta do is pretty much follow the instructions. So let's get into it. So here's all the basic ingredients that you're gonna get in an extract kit. This kit with this yeast cost me about maybe $60. So $60 is gonna get me five gallons of beer, which is, a, like, which is about like two cases in a six pack. So you do the math. So is it worth it to make your own beer at home? I don't know. I guess if your beer turns out good and it's delicious and you can serve it to all your friends and family, uh, then yeah. And you can sit back and enjoy something delicious that you made yourself at home. Okay, so what makes this an extract kit is the use of dry malt extract and liquid malt extract. That's the major difference between this and an all grain brewing system where all this mashing has already been done for you. Uh, you have, you're not using the same amount of grains. Uh, we're basically gonna use these ingredients to make a concentrated wort, which is your unfermented beer, W-O-R-T. And we're gonna start with the dry malt extract, and that's gonna be the base of our beer throughout the boil process. And then at the end, we're gonna add light malt extract. These extracts come in different flavors or colors, depending on the type of beer you're making. So there's amber, there's, if you're using, if you're doing a stout, you're going to be using a, a dark malt extract. I'm going to show you how I use these differently throughout the course of the brew process here. So this recipe calls for amber malt, dry malt extract and light liquid malt extract. Most extract kits do give you some fresh grains. This is a mixture of about four different types of grains. And we're gonna steep these like a tea first, and that's gonna give it some, some flavor and some color profile uh, to match the style that we're doing here. This is where you can really have some fun experimenting with different grains. Uh, this is a really beautiful aroma uh, and color, and it starts the uh, flavor profile of your beer. As we boil, we have a selection of hops. This is another fun way to experiment with different hops. So the last ingredient that you might get with your kit is yeast. I prefer to use these liquid yeasts. This one is an English ale yeast, which was 
which is a very appropriate style to use in our English pub ale. Yeast is another way that you can get different flavor profiles and flavors in your beer by using a different style of yeast. But usually the style of yeast that you choose is matched to the type of beer that you're doing. These liquid yeasts are a little more expensive, but they're really efficient. This is what's gonna ferment your beer and make it alcoholic. So you, and once your beer is ready to ferment, you wanna make sure that you have a very productive fermentation process for the beer to come out good. So these are just an excellent way to get a good fermentation and to get really great flavor profile in your beer. You're also going to need about six gallons of water. So that's about another nine dollars in water. I have always used bottled spring water for my brews. I've never used tap water and I've had excellent results every time. An optional item that you can purchase is something called Irish moss and this is a natural ingredient that you add to the beer and it helps it clarify. It helps drop all the sediment and clarify the beer and make it cleaner and clearer. Very low cost and it will last you many, many brewings. Something else additional that I always add to my brews is yeast nutrient. This bottle cost me $3 and it will last many, many brewings. And it's just another insurance that there's good nutrients in your wort that will help the yeast populate and ferment. Sometimes these are included with kits, otherwise you might need to purchase them separately, uh, but they're just muslin bags that you're going to need to use to put the grain in, uh, as well as I use them for my hops. The next key ingredient to home brewing is a good cleanser. I've been using this one-step no-rinse cleanser from LD Carlson for since my first brew. I've never had a problem. It works great, it's easy to use, it's cost effective. It's very, very important that while you're home brewing, you need to keep everything sanitized and clean and free of debris and outside elements out of your brew or you could ruin it. So I love using this one step, never had a problem with it. And I've never had a beer go bad because something was not clean. So now we're gonna get into the basic equipment that you're gonna need. You could a la carte this, or many um, homebrew companies will sell a whole kit with all your basic supplies. So you're gonna need a brew kettle. This is a thick walled stainless steel brew kettle. I believe this one is uh, five gallons, maybe seven. It's been so long, I don't remember. You're not brewing the entire five gallons at a time. We're only gonna brew about two and a half gallons and then we're gonna add water to it. We're making a concentrate. This will probably run you about $50. Now these usually will come with most starter kits. You're gonna need a five gallon fermentation bucket or an ale pail. This will hold your five gallons and it comes with an airtight lid and an airlock. You're going to need a thermometer that can be submersed into boiling water. You're going to need some test equipment. This is a hydrometer, a sample beaker, and this is called a wine thief. This is how we take samples of the beer, add them to the beaker, and then float our hydrometer. Our Hydrometer is going to give us, one of the things it gives us is specific gravity and that's how you know your beer is ready to ferment and when it's done fermentation and it's safely to take out and bottle. Now you could get away with not using these. I have brewed batches of beer where I did not take hydrometer readings just because I was lazy or didn't have time. And as long as you follow the recipe, uh, you could get away with not doing this. So one cool thing the hydrometer will be able to do for you is if you take your specific gravity readings uh, prior to fermentation and after fermentation, you can figure out what your actual alcohol by volume is. And there's a formula to do that. Otherwise, this is a pretty low cost investment. And this is one way, again, just to make sure that your beer is going to come out delicious as well be ready to be carbonated. Something else you might want to have on hand is a portable thermometer. You're going to need to ferment your beer or at least this ale beer 
or stouts or wheat beers, porters typically need to ferment between 65 and 70 degrees. So you're going to want to find a spot in your home that's dark and cool and will maintain that specific temperature somewhere between 65 and 70 degrees in your house to remain undisturbed for the two weeks of fermentation. I walk around my house with this thermometer taking readings trying to find the optimal spot. Now it's windy. All right, so step one, we need to prepare our cleanser. LD Carlson, one step. It's about one tablespoon per gallon of water. I'm gonna make sure my bucket is clean. My bucket's already been rinsed out with tap water. I will just use hot tap water for this part. So I'm gonna make about two gallons. One, two, here's the powder. You can see what it looks like. And I'll get the warm water going. Your five gallon buckets are conveniently marked on the side. I have this one marked here at two and a half. Sometimes I need that. So I'm gonna mix up two gallons here. Very warm water. You could even use hot water because it's gonna cool down. And I'm gonna use this water, this cleansing water, throughout the process to constantly clean things in the beginning and to clean my thermometer off while I'm working perhaps or if you got to clean your hands but basically uh, I'm going to mix up two gallons here and throw all my stuff in it. Here's my airlock. This is a three-piece airlock that goes in the bucket. Here's my wine feed for samples later. We want to make sure that's clean. You don't want to stick anything dirty in your fresh beer. That goes in. This is a special stirring spoon I'm going to use to uh, while boiling beer. Um, that goes in. Now I'm also going to I'm going to use a clean, fresh sponge. This was unopened. Well, it was unopened. You don't want dish soap on anything. This is a clean sponge, never been used. And I'm gonna use this to wipe stuff down and clean my bucket. I'm gonna to have to clean my lid. I am very anal about the cleaning. You want your ass clean, you know? So I'll use this sponge to wipe down the walls of this bucket periodically. Uh, I'll go in, I'm going to have to, I'll keep wiping this down as I'm working. Uh, I'm going to need this strainer, I'll show you a little bit. So I'm going to dump that in here. Uh, they say it just needs to come in contact for at least five minutes to do its job. And, um, you know, I'll use it to wipe my thermometer down. And then at the end, when you clean up, it's good to, uh, to use this stuff as well. Another great thing about this one-step cleanser, it's no rinse. So once you wipe something down, you don't have to rinse it off. You don't want to rinse it off. You do want to keep it in a clean spot. Don't put it down on something dirty. But I will rub out my kettle. Uh, dip the sponge in my cleaning solution and I will wipe out the kettle because it's been sitting in my basement for a while and I want to clean off any any I don't know bacteria dirt dust microorganisms and when you are boiling in here at a extreme temperature so that would most likely going to kill any uh, bacteria going on but again I might I like to Play it safe. I just kind of do this every time to make sure that I'm starting with a sanitized product. And again, like, <clears throat> you don't need to rinse this stuff out. It's food grade safe and uh, it doesn't affect the beer at all. So uh, we'll just give it a good cleaning. You do probably want to let it dry out, you know, so. Probably just let it dry out for a minute, but all right, let's get cooking. We're gonna start by adding two gallons 
of spring water to the brew cow. I'm going to turn on the heat now because it's going to take a while for this to heat up. I'm going to take my sanitized kitchen shears and also something else while I'm working I'll use a fresh roll of paper towels if I need to dry something uh, don't use a dirty dish rag that's laying around <clears throat> I'm gonna prepare a this is a large muslin bag this actually came with my kit this is a very big one sometimes I'll cut these in half and split the amount of grains this is a pound of grains, which is probably okay to put this all together. Sometimes, you know, I could split this in half and then like, you know, you could, you could, you could, you could cut this in half and put a half a pound in each side just to make sure that when you steep these, you know, that you're getting the full, um, you know, full steep, you know, it's kind of like just steep in a tea bag, but. <clears throat> I think for this one, we're just going to go all in one. All right. Take a nice smell of those. Isn't that beautiful? The smell of the fresh ingredients, I, I just love. You want to try to do this as best you can without spilling. Something like that. Beautiful. All right. And then. I'm going to tie a loose knot on this. See, look how much room there is. But so there, there's enough room for this to spread out. You want to make sure the water flows through it. You want a good steep here. So that's it. I'm going to tie this off. There's, ooh, there's all my grains. Enjoy that smell. And then into the pot it goes. And I'm just going to get the rest of that off the cutting board there. All right, so here is our big tea bag of grains in the pot. You can see, all right, this is going to start the initial flavor profile. It's going to give us some really good flavor uh, as well as the color. So yeah, just make sure that is in there. Now, you're gonna steep at 150 degrees, which is why you need a thermometer like this. Sorry, you can't see that, but all right. I will just, uh, see we're at about 120 right now. I'll put that top on. And when that gets to 150, I'm just gonna pull this out. Put the top on and kill the heat, and that's going to have to sit for about 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do now is pull the thermometer, kill the heat, just give it a stir, make sure that tea bag is nice and loose. I'm gonna let that sit. I'm gonna set my timer for 30 minutes. And now it's the perfect opportunity to crack open that beer. Now I might go clean some more things. Actually, I do have to do, I'm gonna do one more thing here. Cheers. Mm, that's good. <clears throat> In this small pot, I'm gonna heat up. I like to brew with about two and a half gallons, or at least that's what this pot can hold. The more wort 
or the bigger boil that you can do at one time, uh, better the result. The larger your concentrate is, I think, uh, the better the result. But based on the size of this kettle, I can only put about two and a half gallons of water in here, plus all my other ingredients, because you're gonna see later, we're gonna have to maintain boil over here. So anyway, I'll heat up this small pot of water here and let that sit. And then when we're done, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna put my grains in a strainer and I'm gonna rinse them with hot water just to get all the rest of that flavor and goodness out uh, before I discard it, so. Okay, so that's been 30 minutes on the steep. All right, oop. That's what it looks like. Just gonna put that lid out of the way. You can really start to smell that aroma. It's so wonderful. All right, I'm gonna take my sanitized tongs. Here's what that tea bag, giant tea bag is gonna look like. All right, there's your first step. Nice, delicious green tea. All right, now I'm gonna take my sanitized tongs, I'm gonna to take my sanitized strainer. I'm gonna grab our grain bag and let all that goodness drip back in. You don't want to squeeze, have to squeeze it out. Let it drain naturally. All right, then I'm going to take my pot of uh, 140 degree water, same temperature as what's in the kettle, right? So it's about 155, and I'm just going to dry, wash it out. Finish letting that tea bag drain out. And then, a little side note here, don't let your dog eat this. If your dog eats the grain bag, they can get something called uh, malignant hypothermia. So, if you got dogs that might be attracted to this or go through your trash, make sure your dogs do not eat your beer ingredients. All right, it's gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna turn the heat back on high. About two and a half gallons of water in there. I'm gonna put my two pounds of dry malt extract. This is the sparkling amber dry malt extract. I'm gonna take my clean spoon. Bag number two. We're gonna bring this to a boil, a heavy rolling boil. 
Notice that I am not adding the liquid malt extract at this time. I'm gonna add the can of liquid malt extract at the end. It's gonna help it from boiling over with too much ingredients. And it's also gonna help, the liquid has a tendency to scorch and burn more. And also the longer you leave it in, it could darken the color. So, this can here, this can here, we're gonna do with like maybe 10 minutes left, five minutes left. All it needs is enough heat to dissolve this. This is like a syrup. So, this will go in at the end. I use the dry malt extract as the primary base for my boil. So, all right, once that's stirred up good, and you got all the clumpies out of there for the most part, put the lid on. All right, now you're gonna wanna keep an eye on this, because like I said, this stuff can boil out, boil over, but, um, we need to, before you can put your first hop addition in, you need a really good rolling boil. And again, on you know, just on my stove top here, it's a large burner, but it's gonna take uh, five minutes or so to get going, so. But you gotta keep an eye on it. You don't want this shit boiling over. All right, so while the pot is getting ready to boil, I'm going to prepare my first hop addition. This is your bittering hops. Bittering hops are going to go in for the full hour. These are called target hops. Pungent dried citrus and sagebrush overtones. I like when they give you the little description, so. Mm, just take a smell for the road. Here's what they look like. They're dried pellets. I guess it's, uh, it's compressed hops, so when they go in the water, they expand. So which is why if you keep them in this bag, you don't get hop gook all over your pan. It stays cleaner. Um, it's less to ferment out. So I find the, and these, then you just throw them out when they're done. Otherwise you just, you can't, you don't have to use the muslin bags. You can throw the hops right in there, but you just get more gunk and debris in your beer, so. Just less to settle out. I don't think it'll do anything to the flavor though. All right, tie a loose knot. Enjoy the smell. Oh God, it's so great, isn't it? All right. So it's been, I don't know, five, 10 minutes at least. Got that boil going. You want a nice rolling boil. I stir it frequently. You're gonna need to stir it frequently again so it doesn't boil over. So, I'm gonna get ready with my bittering hop addition. Again, this is gonna go in for the full 60 minutes. Final smell for good luck. Make sure that water's going good. And uh, bombs away. I'm gonna now set my timer for 60 minutes. All right, just let that go. I'm gonna, co I cover it kind of partially. I let some ski steam escape, like you don't want to, you don't want to do that because you, you need to be able to watch it. So I'll crack it open so I can keep my eye in there. Uh, and you, know, you do need to co have it covered somewhat because you can see it traps the moisture in. It's going to help with evaporation. You are going to have some evaporation over time. Do not add cold water to it. Just let it go, which is why, you know, that, you know, if you can afford to leave it on the whole way, fine. Um, but I keep it cracked open. You gotta keep an eye on that boil, right? And as, as it starts to build up, I take the top off, it settles back down. 
Uh, you get a lot of hop gunk along the sides. I'll continually kind of splash that down. So it's like every few minutes for the entire 60 minutes, you got to keep an eye on this boil. You got to actively monitor the boil here. All right, now the next step here is until 45 minutes, and then things start getting heavy. All right, so as you actively monitor that boil, keep it rolling, do not let it boil over. I got the rest of my ingredients set up. So at 45 minutes, we'll add the Irish moss. At 10 minutes, we'll add the yeast nutrient and the flavoring hops. We can get these ready in the bag. At about five minutes left, I'll dissolve my final can of liquid malt extract, and I'll throw these in at the very end with just a couple minutes left. And while I have a moment from the boil, I'm gonna prepare my next bag of hops. These are the same hop, these are the target hops. Get all that goodness out of there. I'm gonna tie a loose knot. Tight knot, but leave you know, like a nut sack. Give it a give it a smell for good luck. Oh, baby. So just a side note here, you're gonna want your liquid yeast to be at room temperature by the time you're ready to pitch it into your wort. So I took this out of the fridge a couple hours before I got started. It just needs a few hours you know, to get to room temperature. Uh, read the directions on your package for how to properly prepare it. For this, you wanna just slosh it around, I think. I think this is actually my first time using this from White Labs. White Labs is an excellent company, excellent yeast. Y Yeast is another one. Probably the two that have been around the longest. They make these liquid yeast pouches. This is just goodness right here. This is like ultra goodness right here. So it's like a slurry. So, and the bag might expand as it warms. So you just wanna get your yeast ready according to its directions. Um, have it room temperature by the time you're ready to put it into your beer for fermentation. I'm also going to prepare my yeast nutrient while I'm boiling. And this is a half a teaspoon. Uh, I use a healthy, healthy half a teaspoon. And then I'm gonna use, try to put some warm water in here. You could use, it doesn't have to be warm, but I'll use, uh, I have like a cooler with instant hot. So uh, I'll just make a little slurring with that, hold on. Right, so I got some warm water with my yeast nutrients. And, uh, just give that a little stir. I'll let that, I'll just let that sit. The warm water helps it dissolve, and then you're not lowering the temperature of your beer. And here goes the final hop addition. These are different. These are Kent Golding, another British style hop. So these will go in with like oh, about two minutes left. I'll throw them in. And uh, this will add a nice aroma and bouquet to the nose of the beer and uh, help with some of the initial flavor profile. 
think you're not. Don't get these mixed up. Aroma, lavender, honey, lemon, thyme, orange, grapefruit, porter, stouts, English style ales. Perfect. We're coming up on 15 minutes left in the boil here. All right, so as you can see, I'm gonna take it off. There is some evaporation of our liquid, which is fine. And again, I'll periodically splash the sides to get that hot gunk off there, but do not put cold water in here. Just let it go. So with 15 minutes left, we're gonna add a teaspoon of this Irish moss. This is just a natural ingredient that will help clear the beer, and clar uh, make it clear, clarify it. Um, I guess it works. All right, so we're coming up on 10 minutes left. 10 minutes left in the boil. In goes our second hop edition. These are the uh, target hops. This is the flavoring edition, they call it. In they go. We're also going to add that yeast nutrient slurry. You just want to dissolve that powder in some warm water. Get that on in there. At this point, you do want to try to keep the boil up as best you can. So keep it covered as much as possible, but with about five minutes left, we're going to have to go to the next step. So we're coming up on five minutes. We're going to get our can ready. And look how thick, syrupy that is. It's good stuff. Mm, that's good stuff. All right, so now we're just under five minutes. I'm gonna get that liquid malt extract in here. You can see how thick that is. <clears throat> Stir it as it goes in. You don't want this scorching sticking to the bottom. Does slow the boil down for a moment. If you do want to you know, stir it real good, make sure it's all dissolved. You don't want it sticking on the bottom. If you can, rinse out that can any. I like to get out as much as possible, everything that I can. Mm. We'll get that stirred up and quickly put the top back on. There's about three minutes left now. Coming to the end. All right, so we're coming up on about one minute left. Starting to come back to a boil. I'm gonna throw our finishing hops in there. That one's a different hop style.
And I'll list all these and I'll list the recipe ingredients in the comments. Just let that go for its final moments. Now look, you don't have to be exact on these times, you know, if you're 30 seconds one way or the other, I don't think it's gonna affect too much. There we go, there's the timer, 60 minute boil. At this time, I'm gonna just kill the heat, let that sit, prepare the ice bath. Our next step is to cool your wort as quickly as possible. Cold water. <clears throat> Hot goes in. This is, this is the poor man's way of doing it. It makes the vices coil contraption to cool it quicker and more efficiently, but I've never had a problem with a bag of ice nothing. Although I'd love to own a wart chiller someday. I just don't have the right space for it to do that process. So. Buy yourself a couple big bags of ice, 10 or 20 pounds. Get them to throw some ice packs in here. And you could Crack this open, let it cool off. You don't want to leave it completely open. You don't want anything going, it falling in there. You don't want to leave it completely open, you don't want anything falling in there. So here's a little trick that I learned when I first started brewing. I'm gonna put this to the side. Tin foil is clean and sterile when it's fresh out of the package. So I'm gonna go like this. Good. We'll go like that. I'm going to take my thermometer. I guess the thinking is if the heat comes straight up. I've had a lot of success with my beer when I use this method as opposed to just cracking the lid. So. I'm just going to make a bunch of holes in here, maybe leave a little gap. A little juice that well. Maybe something like that. Give it lots of room for the air, for the steam to escape, and I'm going to set a timer for about 30 minutes right now. That's about how long it might take this to cool down. You need one to cool down below 80. So your thermometer reads needs to read below 80 right now. We're at uh, you know, like a good like almost buck 20 over. So it's got a little ways to go. But the key is to cool it as quickly as possible. I would say it could take up to an hour to get it, you know, between 70 and 80 degrees. Now, once it gets below 80, 
We're gonna add our cool spring water so that'll help cool the temperature as well. All right, so this is about 95, 90, 95, 100 degrees. It's been about 20 minutes, half hour. I'm gonna take my um, wet nut sacks out. I'm gonna take my hot bags out now. I just let them drain out a little bit. They say you're not supposed to squeeze them out. I kind of do a little bit anyway. I mean, why wouldn't you? I don't know. I guess it could get too acidic or something. Or I don't know. But I just try to get a little of that goodness off of there and dry it out a little bit. And I am using sterilized tongs. Where is it? Hmm, what the hell? Let's kind of squeeze it against the side, just get that initial juice off there, but you don't need to like wring it out, you know? That's, I think that's what I'm trying to say. All right, it's till it's dry-ish. And keep that stuff away from your pets. So there's our concentrate, and it's about, I got 90, so probably another five or 10 minutes, and then I'll transfer it to the fermentation bucket and add cool water, and that should, uh, we're gonna try to get it below 80. All right, so the temperature of the concentrated wort, I don't know if you can see that. All right, it's about, it's cooled to about 80 degrees. And I have my clean fermentation bucket. And I'm just gonna dump it in there. Carefully. Every last drop, all the time. And as you can see, it's relatively clean in there. That's because I use those muslin bags for the hops. And uh, otherwise you'd have a bunch of hop residue all the bottom. Actually, it would probably get poured into here. I mean, it'll eventually all just settle at the bottom, but it's just less to filter out, less to settle. And uh, the hops have done, it, done their job at this point. So we're good. Oh, it smells nice. All right, next. All right, so the next part, all we gotta do now is fill it up with our spring water bottles. This is the only part of the brewing process that you want air and oxygen in your wort, in your beer. Um, you might be able to see there's, from pouring that in there, there's lots of foam, nice foamy head, that's good. You want oxygen for the yeast to thrive. So I take my spring water bottle, Shake them up, shake them up vigorously. Get lots of air and oxygen and through that water. And then dump them in. Be careful not to splash. Get a little excited sometimes. So I'll pour a little out. Create some room. You want to aerate your work so that the yeast uh, can better fry. This is a key to a fer quick fermentation. You want to achieve your fermentation in a good at least 24 hours. You should see that airlock bubbling. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Shake the crap out of them.
Now you're just gonna to wanna to top it off at the five gallon mark. Beautiful. So I use a total of about five and a half gallons of water. All right, now we need a sample. I'm gonna take my wine thief. I'm gonna take my sample beaker. I'm gonna get ready with my hydrometer. We wanna know what the starting specific gravity is. All right, so we wanna know what the original gravity is in this. So I dip it in, there's like a little air hole on the top so it fills up and you block it off and then you can put your sample in here. I think it needs to be almost full for this first round. The hydrometer needs to float. Just like so. And you'll just have to read up on how to read these things, but your instructions tell you that the original gravity is 1.042, and final gravity is 1.013. So we have Just about that, 1.042. Maybe it's 4.4, right? I'm not gonna make much of a difference. We did it, we did it. Then what I like to do is give it a little taste test. You can at least taste, it's very sweet, right? Cause that yeast is gonna eat that sugar and create alcohol. So you can you know you can taste your, your malt and uh, barley and your hops in there. I don't know why I put that back in. Alright, I'll put this in the sanitizing bucket. Um I, don't know, I just like to taste it. You know, you can see if something's off, but you can taste the bitterness. It's also like obviously sweet-ish, but you know, you can taste your, your bitter in there and the hops. So I think, uh, you know, and you gotta imagine, right, once the yeast has done its work and added another layer of flavor profile and smoothness and complexity, and then it's gonna be carbonated on top of that. So I think it's good to give it give it a taste, all right? See where you're at. Um, and um, gravity's there, taste seems correct. Now it's time to pitch the yeast. Let's take a temperature first, all right, with my clean thermometer. It's still, this is the part I have trouble with, but I think we'll be all right. It's still, it's at 80. It's telling me 80. <coughs> this also has a thermometer on the side. So this is saying, see this says 68. Well, that's like, that's like the room temperature here is like 68. <coughs> but this is still telling me about 80, but All right, so you can see in there, we got a nice thick layer of foam. All right, you can stir it up as much as you want. Keep aerating, that works. It doesn't matter, you want a lot of oxygen in that, in that stuff. All right, so the temperature is below 80 degrees. My yeast is at the same temperature, or room temperature. And uh, it's like a slurry, so you want to lightly mix it up. 
and these are awesome. So you just crack the top. Look at that. All right, here we go. Ooh, there's a big glob of something. Hmm. Interesting. I've never used this kind. Ooh, there's lots of crap in there. I guess you need to like squish that up more. That's all right. I take my clean spoon. You can mix it around. Again, it's okay to get air in it at this point. You want air in it. Hopefully those uh, <clears throat> little yeast globs will break up. Uh, just gently mix that yeast around. Continue to aerate. So one big clobby in there. All right, so yeast is pitched. Now we gotta seal it up. The airlock has a little bubbler in it. You could put water in here, you could put sanitizer, but my sanitizer is kind of funky. So I'm gonna use a, a little gin, uh, a, uh, like a 90 proof gin. And that'll help kill any bacteria perhaps. <clears throat> Seal the top. And uh, now we uh, pray to the gods of beer and home brewing that when we come back at this time in about 24 hours, or if we're lucky in the morning, uh, this airlock should be bubbling. And that means, whoop, see, it's airtight. Now the airlock should be bubbling. And that means our fermentation has started. So it, within 24 hours, you want to make sure you have some kind of bubbling, consistent bubbling going on in that airlock. Or sometimes you can kind of feel that there's pressure in here. Uh, and you want to let that sit for about two weeks. So I'm going to go find, I usually use like the landing of my basement this time of year because it's warmer than in the basement. Uh, between 65 and 70 degrees is where this wants to sit now for two weeks to do its whole fermentation process and just leave it alone. Check it every day, make sure it's bubbling. The first few days, the bubbler should be going crazy or at least consistently bubbling off. And then, uh, you know, towards the last week or so, you know, you probably won't even see it bubbling anymore, but just let it sit for two weeks. Um, then you can come back and do a final gravity reading. And if it's within the specified range, uh, you can move on to uh, kegging or bottling. So kegging is what I'm going to do this. So um, I'll see you in about two weeks. We will check on our beer and see if it's ready to uh, put it in the keg. Until then, thanks for watching. Keep on rocking. <laughs>